I'm doing now. Yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. And, uh, so you're trying to be one step ahead of the fish because on here, it's pressured as well, isn't it? Even though it was it 58, 50 odd acres? Yeah, yeah, just under 50 acres. Right, and it's still pressured, isn't it? Oh, yeah. You yeah. know, so in these fish. Oh, it's, it's the boating as well. I like to go over there, like, like a chap could go opposite here and out in the boat, and you could sort of sense right where well, them fish are going to turn up there now. And it's almost like yeah. the fish bounce on the pond due to pressure. Yeah. Of and course. they're soon to settle in an area without any pressure. And you sort of half the time wasting your time, if you like. Yeah. Well, they get around a lot, but if they're in an area where they know, you know, and there's no pressure, there's no reason to move. The lake's full of naturals. Yeah, it is. Full of bait it? that everyone chucks in. That's you know, it. You can go out in the boat and see, yeah, he's been putting oh, yeah, bait there. And, he, and you can see that going off. off and then... you know, it's real weird in the autumn, as you expect the time when they're eating a lot of boilies. It's sort of, they don't in here. Yeah. Like big blatant gravel spots they expect it just sits there and rocks. The thing is, not the time obviously with the boat is a big edge, so you can see what they're doing. You can see if yeah, they're making trails in the weed. Yeah, we can apply it to the deal then, yeah. It's, well, the spots they do is crazy. Digging out big craters and just flattening weed and just silt areas being turned but over overnight is crazy. I bet it's head banging sometimes when you, you, obviously you can only cash your rigs out there, but if you cast it out, you go out, don't you? I've oh yeah, seen, go I've out seen and you check do it. it. Countless yeah. times when they come down for a brew, you're like, rods are going out at like 150 or whatever. Go out, check it. If it's not, if the hook link's kicked up a bit, oh, yeah, come back, cast it back out. It's, it is, so it stressful. is. I can't believe how much work all these boys put in to this style of fishing because it's unbelievable. And the fact that you go out there and you'll bait up like a few top tigers or whatever, mm. and it will look perfect. You'll go out the next day, all the bait will be gone oh, and your rig will be sat. Quite often you go is. and check your rig and it's, it, your rig isn't even there. Yeah. You wind in, you think, well, what's going on? I've not had a bleep. You yeah. wind in, you just wind in, you think it's a jet to the five ounce lead, all your rings wrap round. These are razor, razor sharp hooks, you know, it's... It just makes you feel, in a sense, with the boat, it probably blows your mind too much, doesn't it? Because you see their world and you see them doing you over yeah, more often just, than you would like to. It's amazing how accurate you think you were before you started fishing a place like this. Yeah. You think that'll do, it won't do. No, that's it's, right. It's, I mean, you think it's there, it's the stretching mono, it's just, you have to see it to believe it. Yeah, that's right. Get your clip, nice, in the same conditions, it can be sort of five six seven yards in a light 10 pound mono i yeah. stretch it range it's mind-blowing yeah it's, uh, yeah so um so far this year on stone egg because have you got on you've to date meaning we're in early october now i uh, managed to catch 15 now right. so we sort of picked up uh i say i managed four up until late july yeah spent a lot of time prepping areas sort of ready and it's sort of coming to its own for me august i managed to catch nine through august so a few baited areas kicked off for me, and a few multiple catches. Right. And uh, yeah, well, amongst them, 15. I caught one called the bus. Number yeah, nine that bus. was a nice fish. That big, was big, long, double row linear. Absolutely. Yeah. Fish of a lifetime. Yeah, that's it.